All right. Welcome in Southeastern Fly. We're live Facebook and Instagram. Uh, feel free to share this if you will, wherever you get a chance. We will uh, hopefully get out to a few more people. So here we go. Uh, just, I mean, just got in from the river just a few minutes ago, and it was a scorcher. Uh, did a uh, early morning trip today. Uh, it's probably on the river by. I want to say we were we were floating by 6:30 ish, and uh, catching fish by 6:35 ish. It was a pretty good day, but it was a hot one. It was really a hot one. Uh, fished uh, the Caney today. Fishing was uh, wasn't off the charts, but it was really good. It's been really really good this week for us. Uh, lots of uh, whole lot of fish, not a lot of big ones, but some really healthy good ones. Uh, you know, nothing nothing huge, nothing in the 20 plus club yet uh, over the past couple of weeks, but we've been inching our way up there, of course, and it's looking pretty good at the moment. So today we fish mostly nymphs uh, with a little bit of midge action in, in between. Um, pretty good, pretty good luck at first. We were kind of, we kind of caught the tail end to fall in water. And as we caught that falling water, we tried to fish the edges as much as we could, the edges of the seams and that sort of thing. Uh, like I said, it's pretty good. A lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of slow moving water toward the end of the day. Really needed just a little bit longer push of generation, but as I like to say, they don't ask me what they, what I think they should do with generation. They kind of let us work around it. Um, so, so pretty good, pretty good day. Pretty good day on the caning. The elk, let's talk about it in just a minute. We haven't been able to get down there because we've been just doing half day and three quarter day trips, uh, which are much better done on the caney. Uh, but the elk's been fishing really well. I've been been hearing some really good reports down there from friends who've been go running down and fishing the elk. Uh, still fishing nymphs down there too. It's probably a little early to, in, the, in the season to go for dry flies, although you can get them on dries, don't get me wrong. You want consistent fishing uh, with consistent fish in all the right places you're going to want to fish nymphs you're going to want to fish uh, something a little bit dark right now the, the bugs are still just a little dark looking still haven't had quite all the sun yet to, to quote unquote bleach them out if you will which that, that's not exactly what that means but I think you get the you get the hint there um, so really right now good fishing all the way around we're not booked up solid but we're pretty much booked through the end of this month and into june pretty solid uh there might be a little bit of time uh there may be a few days toward the end of june now uh i think i need to i haven't looked at the calendar since i got out of the got uh since probably last week actually um uh, but i uh, got a couple people want to do some trips so if y'all want to get back in touch with me that'd be good the folks that waited around uh, through all the rains of the past two months or so, a little bit past that, back up all the way back up to the end of February. If you think about it, we've been kind of battling this rain through the end of February uh, all the way up until now off and on, kind of hard to get on the river. So for all you folks that have been waiting, believe me, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Uh, I'm feeling pretty confident about the, about the fishing all the way around. Today, today was just a good day. I fished with uh, Dennis and Greg uh, uh, from Kentucky and Oklahoma. What a great couple, couple guys. They they caught right on to uh, to what we were doing really fast. Both of them are good good anglers, and we just had an all around good time. And we we waited till we got to the boat ramp at the end, and we were standing in the parking lot talking. And Greg whips out a banjo, and uh, I didn't know he was a banjo player, but uh, Man, I mean, the people that you meet in this business are just, for the most part, they're awesome. And these two guys today were awesome. Uh, I had another trip earlier this week with uh, two young men that uh, make me feel like there is hope for the world. Both of them are 17 years old and just two fine young gentlemen. Neither had ever fly fished before. Uh, and uh, their mother, I think, had bought them the trip and uh, just really had a good time with those guys. Like I said, it gives you hope for the world. They were two two fine fine young men, uh, so don't feel bad about getting into old age because there are just because you hear it on the news doesn't mean that everybody's like that. Uh, so anyway, good uh, good folks all the way around. 
got some more trips coming up this week before we take the long weekend off. Uh, if you're going to be out on the rivers this weekend, good luck to you. Uh, we would only, the only way I'd do a trip would be super early in the morning. And I'd have to be off super early. Uh, probably, I'd probably want to get out at sunrise if I could. Uh, so if you're thinking about going out there this weekend, uh, more power to you. Uh, so that's what's going on here in Middle Tennessee. So let's move down to the Gulf Coast and talking with uh, friends down there. It looks like the redfish are starting to really turn on. They're getting some good results, especially on windy days. They can go back in the back channels and the back sides of bays and around islands and stuff to, to kind of get out of the wind. And that's where they've been picking up the redfish. Tarpon are starting to come into the Gulf Coast a little bit. Not just the resident tarpon, I don't think. I think there's some, some others, other stuff going on, too. Uh, but uh, we're starting to see more and more reports about the tarpon, which is good. That's, that's good uh, for anybody that wants to run down. If you're going on vacation down there and you're looking for a guide, uh, let me know. And I can kind of I can kind of turn you all on to some, some of the better folks that I've actually fished with before. So you can, uh, you can kind of just see, you know what it's like to fish with a really good saltwater guide. Somebody's not going to yell and scream at you and get all upset because uh, there's I don't want to pay somebody a bunch of money so they can be mad at me for eight hours out of the day. If you can get that, uh, you can get you can go home and get that kind of stuff if you if you know what I mean. Uh, so that's what's going on on the Gulf Coast. It's looking it's looking up and it's just about vacation season too. So people are starting to to leave to go down on the Gulf Coast for vacation uh, and just in time for the fishing to be heating up so this is the fastest 15 minutes on on uh on social in social media so we're going to try to keep it within the 15 minute mark um although i don't really have a clock here anywhere that i can see anyway uh we got to be getting close so let's talk just a minute uh let's talk just a minute about the uh about the sun because man it was a scorcher out there today it's been a scorcher out there the past few days uh we kind of really hoping for not a not a not a lightning storm don't want a lightning storm no thank you uh but really kind of hoping hoping for uh some cloud cover and it just really hadn't been coming till you know after about three o'clock and, and then you're just about done by then uh just about getting off the water so let's talk about the sun and hats. We're going to do a two-part deal here. First one is on uh, on uh, some some just basic stuff uh, to kind of keep you keep your head in the game. So one of the things that I find is when we go on these longer floats, doing these longer days, is that toward the end of the day, people do a couple of things. One, they're trying to cast too far, a whole lot of excess motion. That's one thing that's going on that makes them tired. The other thing is is that it's tough to get people to drink enough water when they're fishing. And I don't know why that is, and I'm the same way, and you may be too. But it's critical that you drink water uh, and get some get some hydration in you and, and keep yourself as fresh as you can. I know that the sun's beating down. It's tough. I get it. And it's tough to remember to drink water, especially on a really good fishing day. Right now, I've still got just a little bit of a headache where I didn't drink quite enough water. But a couple things on the water deal. Uh, in Gatorade, same way. If you want Gatorade water, try to stay away from Cokes. I used to drink a lot of Cokes on the river, uh, and I love sweet tea. Being from the South, I mean, there's nothing better than sweet tea in a styrofoam cup, right? But water and a little bit of Gatorade, too. On your way to the river, drink some water on the way. This, I mean, there's nothing better than to, to down some water on the way. You got nothing else to do but drive and drink water. Just drink a... Even if it's just a cup of water, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, whatever you, whatever your thermos, whatever you've got, your, uh, got your water and you want to drink so, as much as you can on the way down and you should have to go to the bathroom when you get there. Uh, drink some more water right after that. Kind of get your system going with some water to kind of keep your self hydrated. So that's, that's part, part of, part of what it, it's like to keep yourself fresh at the end of the day. And what I mean by fresh at the end of the day, like. After lunch, about 2 o'clock, if you got a full belly, you're a little bit tired anyway from that. The sun's been beating on you all day. You're tired from that. And then, then you find yourself overcasting, trying to too much motion in your cast. 
that sort of thing. The next thing you know, it's 3 o'clock and you are dead beat. And that sometimes can be one of the really good parts of the float. So just anything that you can do to keep yourself fresh, that's what you need to be thinking about. So the sun has really been beaten, beaten down pretty hard. It's been up in the upper 80s and almost 90s uh, this week. So hats. I went and bought a new straw hat the other day, uh, which nobody on the river recognizes me now. They're all looking at my boat, which looks like, you know, a lot like the other boats. And they just don't. They're just like, wow, what, what's good? I don't know. Somebody asked me the other day, was that you that I passed? <laughs> and I said, yeah, it sure was. He's like, wow, I didn't even recognize you. I said, new hat. Oh, okay. That's what it was. But I got a, a little bit bigger straw hat uh, to try to keep that sun off. If you're wearing a baseball cap sim similar to this one, if you could find one with the, the bottom part of the bill, the underside, a darker color, that'll keep that glare from coming up and bouncing off the water and up into your up into your face and frying your face and frying your eyes. Um, just a lot of, lot of little things. So that's one thing. You know, a, a straw hat's one thing. A buff is one thing. A lot of folks are wearing the buff. I find them a little bit warm in the summer, just a little bit. Not terrible. Uh, but I find myself pulling them down onto my neck and not keep them on my face. Uh, so I don't I don't find myself wearing those as much in the summer as I do in the winter whenever they keep your face warm. Of course, you want to keep your face warm. Spray on suntan, you can't hardly tell it, but I've got some, I've had some block on every time I've been out. Uh, and it's pretty much burnt most of my, or crispy my nose and my cheeks. Uh, that's not good. Uh, the spray on sun, sun, uh, the spray on sunblock, any of the spray on sunblock seems to block you a little bit better. It doesn't get on your hands. It doesn't get on your flies. So some people are kind of worried about it getting on their flies and that sort of thing. Uh, if you put it on your hands and wipe it on, um, and then you, you handle your flies, can the fish smell that? There's a whole big debate out there on that and nobody really knows the answer. If anybody tells you they know the answer, then you'll know that they don't know the answer because nobody really knows what a fish is thinking. It's hard to figure out what a fish is thinking that has an IQ of six, right? But, so the spray on sun, sun blocks are really good. They seem to cover a little better too, uh, which is good, which is what you need. Uh, so, so there's that. Uh, handkerchiefs, those are always good uh, to keep your neck kind of dry. The, these have a hoodie on them. These shirts have hoodies on them, and I wear those hoodies, especially around the 11 o'clock to about 2 when the when the sun is really up there and really beating down a lot of times. I'll throw that hoodie up. Uh, definitely not be, trying to be cool. and Definitely not trying to be cute or anything like that because, uh, you know, as I always say, I know I've got a face for radio, but I still don't want to get fried. Uh, I don't want my face to be fried, my hands, uh, gloves. Gloves are always good to wear if you can if you can get a hold of those gloves that the sunblock gloves those are really good. So anyway, you do all that for a couple reasons. One, hydration, keep yourself fresh, keep the sun off of you. Next week though, we're going to talk about clothing. Man, I bet I've got I've got enough clothing, uh, summertime clothing to keep fill two closets, and I really only wear about three or four different things uh, that that really that I think keep me cool. There's a lot of really cool. Cool as in nice and cool, and then cool as in, as in Fonzie cool. Uh, this is in the. This is not the Fonzie cool. This is the try to keep cool. Uh, got that out there. So I've got a whole uh, closet full of stuff out there. And like I say, I always end up using about same three or four or five uh, pieces of clothing to try to keep the sun off of me and try to keep cool at the same time. Uh, and then of course they have the stuff with the. With the insect repellent and that sort of thing, which is whole other, whole other, probably whole other uh, uh, face of uh, uh, live broadcast here. So, but anyway, so that's about the fastest 15 minutes on Facebook we covered. Uh, the Katie fishing good, had, have been having really good trips. If you want to book a trip, uh, go ahead and text me, give me a call or email. Any of the ones we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do any of those. Uh, and then uh, we talked about the uh, the elk as well. Elk's fishing well. That's always a good place to go. Lots of good lots of good water down there. It's it's not full of fish, but there's a lot of fish in there. Good reports coming out of there. I'll probably be down there toward the end of this week. It looks like uh, Gulf Coast. If you're going on vacation, now is the time, right? It's looking really good right now. Uh, 
some good good fishing going on if you're going down for for vacation go ahead and plan on booking a trip down there let me know i can help you out there and then the sun again can't talk about hydration enough it is uh it's there's a lot to the hydration thing uh and the more the older i get i guess the more i figure out that uh we really need to keep ourselves hydrated uh next week going to talk about some clothing um Clothing is a big part of keeping yourself cool in the summer, especially in the south, uh, in the southeast, all the way from, I would say, probably from Kentucky to Arkansas, down into Louisiana, down into Florida, uh, back up into South Carolina and North Carolina, uh, Tennessee, Georgia, of course, Alabama, all of us out there, really keeping ourselves, trying to keep ourselves as cool as we can as we get out there and fish all day on the river. So anyway, there you go. That's our Facebook Live. And uh, I sure appreciate you joining me, and I'm looking forward to talking to you next week. Thanks. Have a good day. Thanks, Facebook.